Good morning. I got a 2013 Subaru Impreza in the shop today. It's a turbo model. I think these have dual overhead cam. We're going to be doing a timing belt and water pump service on it. So routing the timing belt is a little tricky, but should be able to get it with my little tricks. So let's get into this. Yep, so as suspected, they are dual overhead cam or dual side head cam. But uh, game plan here is I'm going to drain the coolant. Remove this uh, radiator just to get some more room. The belts come off, timing covers come off. You get a lot of room, but it's just a little tricky, like I said, to get the belt routed. Right under the car, I got this plastic cover off. So here you can see the timing covers. But what I'm going to be doing is you remove this uh, little drain cock right here and all the coolant drains. You can see the water pump is actually right there, the thermostat goes into it, so all that needs to be removed. Hey guys, do me a favor and take a second and like, subscribe, or comment. It really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. quick check-in so I got the timing covers off so this is my setup here to crack this uh, pulley bolt off sometimes the gun just can't shoot it off and you don't have a lot of room in here to put a bigger gun so you just got to hold the crankshaft this is a special Subaru tool I bought this off Amazon but as soon as I get this uh, loosened actually I'm gonna dial it back in slightly put it in time and then remove this and then we'll get this last timing cover off So we just got this thing in time. So you can see here there's this white mark that aligns with this little notch. 
up here on the block and you'll know it's in time because on the cam gears you'll have these double lines lined up with each other these double lines line up with each other right here and then those double lines lined up with each other right there I mean they're not 100% lined up but they're close enough to still be in time so the nice thing is Subaru does give you these like little helpers when it comes time to install a new belt and then all of these little notches around all these cam gears right there Let's see. one here and one right there those are all there to help you line up the new timing belt the new timing belt has little marks on it so you line them all up and it's kind of hard to get it wrong but it is tricky so here's a look at the belt here so that's one of the marks that i was talking about and there's another mark there another mark there it all just helps you line that back up so we got a new tensioner new bearings new water pump And then there's a little overview of the parts and what we're going to be doing. I don't know if this is a general rule, but I've always found that if the writing on the timing belt faces you and it's not upside down, that's usually the correct orientation for routing the timing belt. As you can see here, it says Mitsuboshi and you can read it, it's not upside down. On a belt like this, it matters because these lines that you use to line up the timing marks, like they are at different lengths on each end. So it has to be the correct orientation.
I got this belt routed on. As you saw, there's a lot of, uh, it's a little tricky just trying to keep everything in time. But I started here and then I moved towards the passenger side over here. I lined up this notch with that white line on the belt. Then you go down here. There's another, let me see if I can get the shot there. Another white line and a notch on the gear. And then you can use these little things here to hold the belt in place. On these Subarus, this passenger side, these cams are always loose, so you don't need a tool. But on this side, if they turn, you're gonna need a tool to turn them back into time like I had to do. But this here is lined up with the white mark on the belt. Hang on, let me get the mirror. There you go, let's see it there. And then up on this last gear, I got that uh, white mark lined up with that notch. And then I use one of these, uh, these clips here just to help me like a like an extra hand just to hold the belt now the new tensioner gets bolted up takes up all the slack I gotta put that last little small tensioner and then the timing covers are back on and we're back in reassembly Quick spin of the crank to verify that this thing's in time. Got all these notches lining up. And then that one lined up. So it's important to note that once you spin it, those marks that were on the timing belt will not line up again. So don't think you got it wrong if they're not lining up again. And also one other important note, you need to loosen all of these guides so that they're not rubbing on the timing belt before you put the timing covers on. Do not forget that. These little tools I'm using here came with a brand new belt for one of these and uh, I just kept them in a Ziploc bag just for this purpose, just to reinstall belts on these. I got all this reassembled so you saw I filled this up first which fills a radiator and then I switched the cup to over here 
to get all the air bubbles out because if I try to fill it through here, these tiny hoses, it's gonna take forever to fill all this stuff up. So I usually just knock it out there and then I go here to do the final bleeding. So let's hop in the car and start this thing. Start this thing together. All right, sounds good. So as you saw, this is not that hard. The trickiest part is routing the new timing belt. But if you're patient and you uh, go the right direction and then you line up all those marks to the cams, you'll get it. So sounds good. It's the same routine for bleeding. I'm going to measure the temperature on the upper hose. Keep measuring on the lower hose. And make sure the thermostat opens. And then once the thermostat opens, I'll wait for the fans to turn on. And uh, once the fans turn on, I'll close up the cooling system and take this for a test drive. So, another one done, guys. Thanks for watching. Fans are on.